we're going to be doing the Ghostbusters project. Uh, it looks something like this in the end. It's a little game where you have a, an amount of time and a score, and your job, your goal of the game is to click on these guys before they disappear. And it's going to teach you a lot of really good fundamentals for making all sorts of types of games. There you go. I ran out of time. My score is 13. I'm terrible. Anyways, let's make this game. Real quick, thank you to Code Club Projects for providing the original tutorial, but it's 2.0, so I'm making an updated version. So over in Scratch, we're going to create our new project. We're going to start by setting up the scene. So first of all, we don't have a cat. Let's get rid of him. Then for our backdrop, we probably want to choose, you can choose whatever you want, uh, but I'm going to choose something spooky. There we go, let's do the jungle. Um, and we need a sprite that's going to be our ghost. So let's see if they have a ghost here. They do, there we go. All right, we got a ghost. The next thing we're gonna do here is we wanna create the code for the ghost to show and hide. Because if you remember that game, that ghost was there and then he would disappear for a while. And then he would be there and you could click on him and then he'd disappear again for a while. So we need to recreate that effect. So what we're gonna do is go over to events and when we start the game, when we click start, we're gonna start uh, having him hide it's going to hide him. If I click on hide, it'll hide him. See, he's gone. And then showing him alternately. So we're going to hide and show him. So we'll say hide. And then we're going to wait for a little bit in controls. Wait one second. And then show him again. And then wait one more second. So that'll work. We can click start. And then he shows and he hides and he shows up again. But we need to have that. Bleh. But we need that to happen more than once. So we're going to put on forever to start with to get him showing and hiding forever. There you go, there's step one. The next thing we need him to do is instead of just showing and hiding in the same place over and over again, we need him to choose different places to go to. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to motion and we're gonna choose this go to random position. So what's going to happen here is this. Let's take this out to make this really clear. So we start our game and he's, and he's shown, right? And then we're gonna wait one second and we're gonna hide him. Then he's gonna go to a random position and then we're going to show him again, and now he'll show up in that new random position. So let's put this all back together real quick. We will be hiding him, and then waiting one second, and then we'll go to a random position, and then we'll show him now that he's in his new random spot. So if you see how this is going to look, it's going to look like this. Now we start, he's there, he hides, he goes to a new spot, he shows again. That was a bad example. There he is. And there he is, going to random positions all over our screen. Awesome. The next thing we want to make it possible to do is to actually catch the ghost so that when you click on him, he disappears. So the way we're going to do that is by going into events here and choosing this when sprite clicked option. So when he's clicked, we're going to hide him because we got him. He's hidden now, so he'll be hidden now. So now if I click start again and he shows up, boom, I can click him and get rid of him. Boom. He'll also disappear on his own after a second, but if I click him, it gets rid of him faster. Now would be a good time to add sound. So let's go over to sounds tab. Each, sp each sprite has its own sounds as code, costumes, and sounds over here on the right. If you click on sounds, you can go down to the bottom here and choose a sound. And so there's all sorts of sounds and you can mouse over them to listen to them all. I'm going to choose one called pop. Sounds like that. And then back in the code, whenever we catch a ghost, we're going to play the pop sound so that we know we got him. So we're gonna play sound, start sound, pop. All right, so now if I stop it and start it again, let's listen real quick. There you go. Now when I click on him, it plays the pop sound when I get him. Nice. The next thing we're gonna do is add a score to our game. Because games, you have to have some way of knowing if you won, right? So we wanna be keeping track of how many ghosts we've busted so far. And the way we're gonna do that is with something called a variable. So a variable is just something that holds a piece of information. So we could create a variable called score for this sprite and say okay. And now this variable score will hold whatever information we want to put inside of it. So what we want it to do is when the game first starts, we're going to set that variable score, set the variable score equal to zero, right when the game starts, okay? Because when the game starts, our score should be zero. It shouldn't be the last person's score, it should be zero again. And then every time we click on a ghost, it should increase our score by one. So now when I click start, our score is zero. And now every time I click on a ghost, it plays pop, it increases my score by one. If I click stop and play again, it resets my score to zero, as it should. 
Don't forget to title your project, you guys. I always forget to. The next thing we're going to do is create a time variable. So we have only a certain amount of time to catch all these ghosts. It wouldn't be really be fair if I could just click on the ghosts forever, right? I could just leave the ghost going for days and days and days. So to do that, we're going to create another variable. And this variable is going to be called time. And it's going to show up right here. And we can go ahead and move it to the right or wherever you want to put it on the screen. And we're going to create a new little section of code for this one, just to keep everything clear. When we click Start, now we're going to do something a little different. So, so when we click Start, we're going to go to My Variables, and we're going to set the time variable equal to however much time we want to give the player. So let's say we want to give them 10 seconds to catch as many ghosts as they can. Then we're going to go over to our Control here, and there's a block in here called repeat until. Repeat until is going to repeat everything inside of it until this certain thing happens. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So for us, what we want, we want the time to keep going down. So uh, change our time by minus one. So we're going to change time by minus one, and then we're going to wait one second, right? Every second, we'll change our time by one. So wait one second, change time by minus one. And we want that to keep going until our time is equal to zero. So if you need the variable time, it's right here. Time is equal to zero. So now, if we click Start, our time is set to zero. And it tracks down. And I have only so much time to get the ghosts. And then it goes to one and then it goes to zero. Except the game is still running. We have a little bit of a problem. Look, the game is still running. The time says zero and it stopped counting down, which is good. It did what it was supposed to, but the game is still running. My score is still increasing. I can still click on ghosts. That's not what's supposed to happen. Well, the, what we're missing here is in events, there's this little thing down here called stop all, sorry, in control. There's this little thing down here called stop all. And stop all stops all of these other scripts from running. So the ghosts stop showing up and disappearing and stuff. So when the game ends, when we run out of time, we want to stop everything, stop the whole game. So now if I run this, and I play the game for a little bit, doo -doo -doo, catching ghosts. There, now look, time is zero, no more ghosts show up, my score is five, end of the game. You can also change these variables here. If you right click on them, you can change them to large readouts like this. So time can look like this and score could look like this, or you can put them back to the normal readouts. Whatever you want, it's up to you. I like that. Let's talk about one more thing here. We have a game, and the game looks great, and it works, and we have a time, and we have a score, and it all it all works correctly. But it's kind of boring, right? The ghost appears and disappears at random places, but we always know once every second he'll show up. He'll always be here for one second. Maybe it'd be fun to add some sort of randomness to the game. like. Maybe have the ghost wait a random amount of time before he before he shows up. So we can do that. And the way we can do that is by going into operators here. There's this option called pick random number between 1 to 10. So you can change this to whatever you want. So we could have him wait how before he shows up again. So we could give him a random amount of time to be here. So th this could mean he could show between, let's say he could show for half a second or he could show for up to two seconds. And we don't know what that's going to be ahead of time. And then he can be hidden for half a second or up to two seconds. Now when we play our game, it's going to be a little bit random. So there he is. But that time it took a long time for him to show back up, right? There he is. There he is. So it adds a little bit more challenge and interest to our game, because you never know exactly when or where he's going to show up. I'm going to show you guys how to do one more object, OK? It'll be almost exactly the same as doing the ghost. But we're going to try it with one more of them, OK? So we're going to choose a sprite. And we're going to choose a bat, and we're going to add him to the game. And we'll make him a little bit smaller, like 50. Maybe he'll be a little harder to click on. And then a lot of the stuff we're going to do for this guy is going to be very similar to what we did for the ghost. So one cool thing you can do is if you need code from another piece, you can grab it, and you can drag it over to him, and then let go. And now if I go over to him, see, I've copied that code. Now, we don't need to set the score again. We're already setting the score. We only need to do that once. Uh, the other thing we'll need here is we don't need time again. But we do need when the sprite is clicked. So we'll drag that into him. And we'll put it somewhere else, like right here. So maybe the bat will play. Uh, let's, let's have the bat be a, the bat's a little harder to hit. He's a little smaller. So let's make him three. And maybe we'll have him show up a little bit less often. So maybe he might sometimes wait 
he'll make he'll wait at least two seconds to show up but he might wait for as long as five seconds and he'll stay for a little bit longer like maybe he'll only stay for 0.5 to one seconds so he'll stay for a little shorter he'll be a little harder to hit he'll be worth a few more points so now if i play the game i have the ghost who shows up a lot but then i also have the bat who i can click on to increase my score by even more but the bat's a little more rare he doesn't show up as much so here's my challenge to you guys i want to see if you can add your own object to the game all right so just like i just created the bat try to create another object of your own with a different score or a different uh amount of time it waits or a different place it shows up or a different sound that it plays something like that uh, maybe it could decrease your score. Maybe if you click on it, it takes away from your score and you should avoid clicking on it. Uh, all sorts of stuff you can do. Good luck.